You know, when it comes down to it, trophies are the real MVPs. Trophies are there for us for so many accomplishments, from tiny to not so tiny, reminding us that we have some value in this world. We're not just a collection of cells on a rock in infinite empty space. We mean something. Trophies have been a part of my life too. I'm a millennial, so of course I have a closet full of participation trophies that I cherish. And I consider myself to be a trophy husband. Most trophies are mostly received and forgotten, but in Boston, they've ended up in a very strange spot, under a bridge. For years, there's been a secret trophy room under this bridge in Cambridge that has left locals and tourists puzzled. So why are all these trophies under this bridge? Who keeps putting them up there? Who started it? Why did he start it? Well, well, I got answers. I found the man who started it all. I guess they're called street art. Urban art, guerrilla art, uh, whatever you want to call it. I smell a mystery, so it's about time for me to get into character because Detective Rob is on the case. The rain outside poured like a hundred proof whiskey in my glass. Except rain doesn't help me get through another day of working in local news. And puddles never give me a hangover quite like this one. I had a case. A case of the Mondays and a case of Excedrin migraine to get me through the day. But more importantly, I had a case that would pay the bills. Or at least make some good content for the internet. A real mystery in Beantown. Some character's been putting trophies under the Longfellow Bridge in Cambridge since 2015. Seems like everyone got an invite to the party because more and more new trophies keep showing up. I don't get invited to many parties, mostly because we're still going through a global pandemic, but also because Trouble always seems to find me. Trouble is the nickname for my ex, and she always seems to find herself where I end up. This hidden trophy room has been a local mystery in the city before and after the bridge was rebuilt a few years back, and nobody has come forward to take the credit for this impromptu public art exhibit. I called up my buddy Google to see if he had heard anything about this mysterious trophy guy, but he wouldn't talk. Some muscle must have gotten to him first. All I found were more questions and ads for Harry's razors. Suddenly, a dame walked into my office looking like she needed help. Most dames don't come down to my home office unless they really need something. She looked familiar. Almost like someone I could have married once upon a time. If I weren't such a grizzled detective with a- Honey, can you help me change this poopy diaper? Change that poopy diaper. It came back to something that smelled like trouble. Not my ex, mind you. <laughs> trouble, as in actual trouble. It was him, the man behind all the trophies under the bridge. Someone who stayed in the shadows. He agreed to meet, as long as I kept his identity hidden. I agreed because I needed answers, and answers were in short supply, much like goods in America due to supply chain issues. I made my way to Cambridge for the meeting, walked down the sidewalk, and there he was, the man behind it all. Hello, Rob. It was <laughs> Turns out the man behind the trophy room is a local attorney in his 50s. Shoulda known. I've always had trouble with the law, Probably why I flunked out of law school and ended up as a local reporter pretending to be a gumshoe. I had to know where it all began, so I asked, and he sang like a canary. I used to walk by this area on occasion and noticed that there were some angle irons attached to the side of the bridge that looked like shelving. And it was just empty shelves, and every time I walked by, I thought, we need something there. You know, I thought, oh, do we put pumps, you know, shoes, or something interesting? One day I was at a recycle center, and the guy pulled behind me and he said, do you know where you get rid of these? And it was a big box of bowling trophies, women's, men's, I'll take that. And sort of snuck it over to the bridge, put it on there, fully expecting the next day it would be gone. And when I came back a few days later, the trophies were still there. So I added a few more. After a while, I noticed some other people added some trophies, and suddenly this became popular online, and people were coming by wondering what was going on. Devious. A whole trophy operation right under our noses. It looked like he's had accomplices over the years, dozens of them, all adding their own trophies from sports, education, or whatever this is. And locals have taken notice. Bloggers and the rats on Twitter. Even tourists stop under the bridge. 
You can even find the trophy room on TripAdvisor. This art display has definitely gotten attention. The project hit a snag a few years ago, when the bridge underwent construction work and the shelves were removed. But life and trophies find a way. After construction, they were no longer the reinforcing angle iron. As a result, I had to look for a place to put them, and what I saw was there was safe space in the rafters under the bridge, but they're hard to reach. I do have a tool that, that helps me reach. I don't know how other people have been able to get their trophies up that high as well. Um, maybe they've got some tall friends. This crafty attorney has been adding to the operation for years. I needed to know his supplier. So I don't actually buy them. It's all recycled. If I'm at a recycling center discarding something, that'll be my opportunity if I happen to see a trophy. I had a friend who works in a recycling center who keeps an eye out for things. Trophies coming and going with no trace. But what's the motive? Is it just for kicks, or is there something more sinister going on? I wasn't particularly sporty as a kid. I did have a selection of participation trophies, but they weren't particularly meaningful to me. Um, so the irony is that I'm not the one who achieved these trophies, I'm not the one who won them or participated to get them. Am I <laughs> trying to overcompensate for my lack of sporting success as a kid? I don't think it's manifest from that, it's more of the artistic expression, the more of the ability to be provocative by putting something out of context that was from other people's achievement. During the construction, he took his criminal enterprise on the road to dozens of locations around the globe putting random trophies in public view for kicks, from Tokyo to Paris, bringing with him as many trophies as can fit in his luggage. And he calls this operation the Trophy Room Project. And it's sometimes a very challenging project because I try to travel light. Japan was one of my favorites. So I went to Tokyo, I figured, all right, I'm going to check a bag. I brought 24 trophies. I was in um, Bristol in the UK, and I had a bunch of handball trophies. They're very attractive. Um, and I put them in a prominent position on a bridge and walked uh, a little further on a hill so I could observe how people interact with them. And after a while, a whole group of kids came by and they were taking selfies with them and everything. I happened to have gone on a trip to China for work and I brought a little hockey trophy and set it up at the Yulu Academy, which is um, in Changchow. And as I was setting it up, I was trying to be really discreet. I didn't want anybody getting upset that I was setting up this hockey trophy in this sort of sacred place. The kid comes walking over and he's staring at the thing and, and just a huge smile. And what I realized is, you know, these trophies transcend language, culture. He maintains the operation by cleaning, organizing, and adding new trophies to keep it all going. But what's it all for? What's the message? We spend our days sort of looking for or understanding the context of things around us. And if something's out of place, Wonder, wonder why, and I think that's the whole purpose of art, is to sort of provoke thought. Why is this here? What's this doing here? How does this relate to me? In my job as an attorney, I try to add context to everything I do to anticipate whatever might go wrong and make sure the parties are in agreement about whatever we're dealing with in terms of the transaction. This is the opposite. I want to create a surprise. I want to create, um, you know, wonder and you know, questioning. The anonymity of it gives me a chance to provoke more thought because people wonder where, where did this come from why is this here and the urban legends that develop around it sort of add to the uh, add to the mystery and to the story the rogue artist said he stays anonymous to keep the project mysterious plus he doesn't want to get fined by the fuzz for littering and it's a way for him to express his creativity i have always worked on sort of artistic projects my passion it was clearly more artistic before becoming a lawyer. People were a little surprised by my uh, career choice, but it still involves a lot of creativity and problem solving. But this, this is just one manifestation of some of the creative projects that I've worked on. And he isn't done. Odd for some to leave a life of crime. He's looking to add even more to his rap sheet by creating things like custom trophies. Work on the custom trophies that are really enjoyed. Um, where it's not just placing and recycling something, it's creating something new. I'm looking at something different, which is you know, more of changing uh, part of the form factor. So again, taking things out of context, putting other strange things on top. Case closed. We parted ways and I came home with answers to questions. For now, more questions than answers. 
It was time to go into the cupboard and make a new friend, that friend being a bottle of booze, because I was still playing the character of a private eye with a drinking problem, at least until my toddler's bedtime. I got a glass of the brown stuff, and a little something to keep my mind off this once-in-a-lifetime case. Damn, you know Rubik's cubes are hotter in black and white. I'm doing a, I'm doing a quick thing. Wow. Wow. All right, bye. Say hi, Max. Hi. Hi, Max. Oi, 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 oi. Okay.